<laughs> All right, hey, welcome to the session. Man, there's a lot of freaking noise, so the other surgeons are all jealous. <laughs> Are you guys having a great conference? Yeah. 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 yeah! Awesome. So definitely when you get a chance, make sure you tell like the um, organizers of the conference, Laura and, and those guys, that you guys are really enjoying this. Um, I hope you, you know, let Carney Wilson know that you guys are having a great time. It's been a great experience for you. Um, I cuss a little bit too much. They probably won't invite me back next year. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Just don't That's talk to right. Laura. I know. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so my patients know, you know, we get a lot of, I give them a lot of information. Anyone watch Wheel of Fortune? Yep. Yeah. Wheel of Fortune? You know, when I was little and we were watching Wheel of Fortune, everybody, when they would get to the final puzzle, they always guess the same letters and constant, like five letters and one vowel, and R, S, T, L, N, E, and then the letter E, vowel. So they got smart, so they, they, gave, they give you, now, if you watch Wheel of Fortune, they give you those five letters, and then they said you get three more consonants and one more vowel, right? Which is like really freaking hard to think of a puzzle where you can do that, right? So um, we're going to talk about weight regain, and um, I'm going to give you some stuff. My R's, T, L, and E. <laughs> These are givens, and then I'm going to give you some cool shit. Does that sound good? Yeah. yeah. Right. So if you do not want to regain weight. These are the things that you have to do. So these are musts. Okay? Not shoulds, musts. Okay? You must learn to meditate. That is the, that is the first. If, if y'all go to heaven and see Jesus, <laughs> and I didn't teach y'all to meditate, I didn't do my job. The number one thing that's going to change your life right now is shutting off the noise. And all meditation is, is listening and focusing on your breath. And that's it. It's not religious. You can be a good Christian and meditate. You can be a great atheist and meditate. I don't care. Learn to meditate. Okay? Because what that does is it will shut off a lot of noise. And even if you can't meditate very long, like I meditate probably 20 to 25 minutes a day, yeah? Every morning. Of those 25 minutes, I might have one minute of silence. <laughs> and I've been doing this for six and a half years and I'm terrible at it and it's the hardest thing I've learned to do and I'm a surgeon y'all <laughs> and I'm telling y'all meditation is the hardest thing you're going to do so if you sit there and try to meditate one time you're like I can't do it, I'm terrible don't give up, I'm telling you it's hard okay, so meditate goal set okay, who asked that question in that last panel about the weight loss plateau, 20 pounds and you stop so is, are, is she in the room? No. Okay, that, good. Because the answer to that is bullshit, right? <laughs> There's no difference. You just have to love yourself to keep setting new goals, keep pushing yourself. Okay? We say this thing in my uh, clinic. It's skinny AF. <laughs> That's your ultimate goal. And sexy. Yeah, sexy. Right? <laughs> so always setting new goals because it's challenging you to do more, become more. The second, the second you stop trying to be sexy AF, the second that you become comfortable with your weight, that's when the weight regains. Any ahas? Okay, yeah. here, we're going to go to church. Y'all want to go to church today? Yeah. I, went, I grew up in East Texas. You know, I, I ended up there when I was like six years old, little Asian immigrant with a bunch of uh, shit kickers <laughs> and, uh, and cow, cow tippers. And, and it's funny, I, I actually have a Texas accent, so if you give me a couple beers, I'll start speaking with an East Texas accent, and I'll start two-stepping for you, too. <laughs> if you've never seen an Asian two-step, it's <laughs> something to behold, okay? So, <laughs> what did I just tell you that for? <laughs> what was I talking about, y'all? Uh, We're in school. Golf study. Go to church. All right, right. So if I... <laughs> So if I so I went to Southern churches, Southern Baptist black churches. So so when I say something good and something resonates with y'all, y'all can y'all give me a good amen? amen. There you go. So you just shout it out. Like if I said something like that resonates with you, just say amen. Everyone will know what you're talking about. Okay. So goal set. Next thing, journaling. Yeah. 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 Amen. <laughs> I like this crap. So journaling, not like. Like, dear, dear diary, Bobby made fun of me today. Um, it's 
not that it's not that type of journaling. If you there's several types of journaling, but the number one journaling that you've got to do is this gratitude. It's a, grat Amen. it's a gratitude journal, right? I, and here's a sentence: I am grateful and thankful for blank. Okay, this will take you one minute every single morning. I'm grateful and thankful for my my husband. I'm grateful and thankful for my kids. So for me, I do. I'm grateful and thankful. You know, for my kids, my family, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm grateful and thankful for my patients who love me and trust me. I'm grateful and thankful for Loveless, which is the hospital organization I work for, who given me this opportunity, right? Um, so gratitude, when you become grateful and thankful for patients, then it's hard for me to look at y'all and be impatient. Y'all. Y'all. <laughs> right? It's hard for me... Um, it's, or it's easy for, easier for me to, to connect with you when I know that you're my purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I want to tell you a, a dirty secret about medicine. Medicine people hate patients. Medical people would be like, medicine is so much, would be so much better if it wasn't for the damn patients. <laughs> <laughs> That's what doctors think. The problem is, like, at some point, we will all become patients. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Even I will become a patient some, at some point. And I, I want that asshole on the other end to like, treat me nicely. Yeah. Yes? Amen. Yeah. So I promise you I'm a nice guy. So gratitude, if you're going to do anything, it's gratitude. Okay? Because I know other programs tell you, you've got a food journal, food log. Who, who likes the food journal? Yeah. Yeah. You see, nobody. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> but how hard is it for 30 seconds in the morning to say, I am grateful and thankful for today. I am grateful and thankful for this breath. I am grateful and thankful for my husband. And that's how your marriage gets better, by the way, is being grateful and thankful for your idiot husband. <laughs> okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, that, so, so that's your... <laughs> okay, those are your musts. Now, what we're going to do is talk about the Dr. V diet real quick. Guess what book number 12 is going to be? Dr. V diet. Yeah. The Dr. V diet. Okay, I have a Dr. V uh, challenge. So if you look up uh, hashtag Dr. V diet challenge, you'll see the video. It's a, about a 30 minute video. But I'm going to give you the nuts and bolts real quick, okay? So, one, it's a green smoothie for breakfast. Exactly what I just, and that's why you're going to regain weight. Okay. Ooh, ooh, that's good. <laughs> okay. Green smoothie, there's books on it, videos, you can Google what's in a green smoothie, okay? And it does, it's not the color green, it means green because you put some leafy greens in there, like kale or spinach. You won't taste it, etc. Different recipes, I have a book on it. And, um... So the first thing is green smoothie for breakfast or lunch. It's usually for breakfast, I'll just say that, because most of the American foods, breakfast foods are what? Crap, Crap right? They're terrible for you, okay? <laughs> so green smoothie, uh, and then salad a day. Big-ass salad. Yeah, big-ass salad a day. Now, uh, if you're post-op, it's going to be a small big-ass salad. But, uh, salad a day. It's usually lunch. It can be dinner. It's usually lunch. Okay. Number three. Um... Is going to be 10 bottles of water a day, whatever that means to you. Hey, listen, y'all sit there and go, oh my God! But if, if I said 10 beers, y'all be like, all right. <laughs> y'all drink that like it's nothing. 10 bottles of beer. 10 bottles of water, oh, I can't do that. Okay, so sit, sit, sit while they lock. And then number four is no snacking, okay? So exactly what I said the last time. There are not good snacking choices. And it's a um, seeking behavior, it's an obesity behavior, and we taught y'all to, to get a healthy snack because we're giving in to your demands for more food, right? Amen. Who here has made great food choices their whole life? See, nobody. <laughs> nobody. So when I tell you to sit there and have a healthy snack, that doesn't mean shit to y'all. You're like, I don't know what that means. Right? So then you start looking for like fat free yogurt pudding and chips and oh my god, the protein chips. Have you guys who's tried the protein chips? That thing was freaking genius. If I had invented protein chips, I'd be retired. I'd not be here. So but it's buying you guys are buying into that, right? Okay, y'all got that? Yes. Okay, y'all wanna do some cool shit? Wait, no no no. I'm gonna choose. Oh my god, you're holding up the Well, I don't have a fear. <laughs> First rule is what? Dr. Bone's a nice guy. Dr. Bone. <laughs> okay, wait three games. 
<laughs> okay. Um, so I did a I did a talk in my group last week um, uh, that was I think probably one of my best talks I've ever given. So I want to give this to y'all. All right. Is that all right to you? Yeah. All right. And you got to remember I've done a, a talk a week and then Saturday talks for five years now. So I got a lot of content. And I'm going to tell you this is probably one of my best talks. Okay. So. Um, who loves Snapchat? Who loves Snapchat? Yeah. You all love Snapchat? <laughs> you know, the, like the little like halos of flowers? <laughs> the little bunny ears? Yeah. Y'all love it? Y'all love it, right? Yeah. So, um, so you guys know how, how um, Snapchat works, right? You basically take, you have a video or picture of yourself on the screen, and then Snapchat lays over a filter. That's your bunny ears, your stuff like that, right? Okay, um, the first thing I want to tell you, you guys know how vision works? Eyesight works? How does eyesight work? Yeah, y'all see me up here? Yeah. Some of y'all are sitting there looking at me going, that's a skinny ass Asian, right? Yeah, and then some of y'all be like, dude, that guy's skinny. I snap him in half. He's like nuts. <laughs> right? Some of the big guys in the back, he's like, that guy's a pussy. Oh, pussy. <laughs> right? And some of you ladies are going, that guy's skinny. I'll snap him in half. <laughs> right? So, but, but I'm the same dude, right? I'm the same dude. So what happens is these lights are coming down. They hit my pretty olive skin here, right? And um, bounce off me. And it travels through the air as photons to your eyeballs, and it hits your optic nerve, causes electrical excitation. And that's really what, um, how eyesight works. So we think that we look, and then we see. But the answer I'm going to tell you is that your eyes, write this down, are, they're actually projectors. So... So not only do they receive, not only are they receptors, they also are projectors, how you're seeing the world. And what happens is eventually, at the end of your life, you're going to have a movie of your life. Is that true? Where you think back and replay the stuff that you've experienced. If you ever had a near-death experience, <laughs> and they say, my life flashed before my eyes. <laughs> Woo! That's, that's like the move, that's the projector. Y'all got that? So... Amen. So thank you. So you're like, so let's say there's a skinny guy here, smiling, and they're looking at um, an apple. Yeah, y'all got my apple here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's an apple, and this guy is very happy, and he looks and he sees an apple, and on this apple there's a brown spot, mm. and you yeah ooh. And you pick it up, and you're looking at it, and it says, the perfect apple, but you turn around, and you see this brown spot, and you say, ew, that's gross. I don't want that apple. I'll put it down, and I'll find me a perfect apple. Yes? So, but why do we do that? Well, it's because this person has a filter. You have a filter through which your eyes are looking through, like a Snapchat filter. And for lack of a better word, I'll call this filter... USA filter, <laughs> because that's what we do in America, right? We see a brown spot, we say we don't want that apple. But there's really nothing wrong with that apple, right? Um, and let's say over here, here's another guy. He's all sad, and he's looking at this apple, but he sees it through a different filter, and that filter, we'll call it hunger. And you can call it hunger, you can call it poverty, immigrant, <laughs> but you're going to see this apple, and this guy looking through the apple, through this hunger filter, be like, I'll eat the shit out of that apple. <laughs> like, give me your apple. I'll take your apple. He'll dumpster dive to have scraps of food and scraps of apple. Does that make sense? Yeah. But it's the same freaking apple. Mm -hmm. It's the same apple. Does that make sense to y'all? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And why does one person see it one way and a different person see it a different way? It's because we are given these filters. Okay, so number two, one, your eyes are projectors. Number two, um, you have filters. And the, end, the word I want you to put is this, built in. It's, it's built in. It's built in by 
where you were raised, born, grew up, your country, your origin, your experiences, what your parent, parents tell you, if you grew up white, etc. So number three is this. You have many filters, not just one. Does that make sense? I don't know if y'all noticed, but I'm a boy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. So I have a boy filter. I do boy things. <laughs> Most of the time, I do boy things. You guys have girl filters. You guys say shit that I don't understand. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Right? And I probably won't ever understand. Right? I have an Asian filter, an immigrant filter. You guys have white people filter. Right? You have an American filter. Um, these are all filters. Right? So there, the next thing you got to understand is there's lots of filters here. you got lots of filters. It's not one or two. It's many filters. Okay? So... Where do these filters come from, right? It comes from lots of sources, like culture, right? When a baby's born, who has a newborn baby or been, been around newborn baby? So you've been around newborn baby, right? They comes out all gooey and messy, right? And you look at it, and the baby looks like what? It's like the happiest thing ever. It's just like, ah! It's happy, and it doesn't know if it's Asian or white or male or female. It's just smiling, right? Why? Well, because it just came from its source, right? It just came... So it doesn't have any cult any filters. But the second that that it's popped out <laughs> on this part, it, it automatically has it automatically has an American filter. Right? As opposed to a South African filter or Egyptian filter. Right? So it's culture, so it's country, it's places, right? But it's also your filters also come from people. Your mom, your dad, they will put their filters on you. Oh, we are Republicans. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we are Democrats. I love this one. We are Cowboys fans. <laughs> we are Seattle Seahawks fans. Why? Why are you a Seahawks fan? <laughs> because somebody put that filter in your brain, because that's what we do around here, boy. We are Seahawks fans. Got it? See? And, and people you respect. So parents? Teachers? Preachers? Hey, listen, you know, I've been really working hard with Mary Sue, and I just don't think she's good at math. Boom. Uh, now suddenly you have a I am no good at math filter. So the second someone says, you know, Mary Sue, you really need to balance your checkbook. You, you, you're looking at your checkbook through this filter that I'm no good at math, and these numbers don't mean anything to you. But it's a fake filter. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What I'm telling you? Yeah. It was just someone just said that because instead of studying for your math test, you decided to stay up on the phone and talk to your girlfriend about Bobby's ass. <laughs> I bet Bobby look at those blue jeans today. Really? Wow. And then the next morning when you go take your test, you're like, oh my god, algebra. What is this algebra we're talking about? Right? It's not for who? Right? Does that make sense? So, and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Because because you say, I'm not good at math. Oh my god, I just hope I get a C. You get a C. Thank God. I just got my pass. I got my diploma. But now you're left with this belief that you're not good at math. The reality is you just stayed up and talked to, about Bobby. That's it. So it justifies what you really wanted, which was to stay up and, and ignore the test taking and not live with the consequences. Does that make sense? And you didn't want it. Right? I mean... If you're given the choice be between being an A student and a C student, which one would you choose? A. Yeah, duh. <laughs> if, you, if you're given the choice of living a happy life or a miserable life, which life would you pick? Yeah. Of course you would. But why do mother-in-laws just insist on making you miserable? <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's their own forcefulness. <laughs> okay? Now, where else does the filter come from? The saddest thing is this. Ourselves. We impose them on ourselves. We say, uh, I'm not that cute. Who could love me? They don't understand me. I speak with a lift. 
<laughs> I speak with an accent. You know, I'm too short, I'm too tall, I'm too fat, I'm too skinny, I'm clumsy, right? And we always find fault with ourselves, and every time we say something like that, we put a filter in place. I just can't lose the last 20 pounds. I just can't lose the last 20 pounds. I just can't lose the last 20 pounds. If you keep saying that, what's going to happen to the last 20 pounds? You're not going to lose it. Why not? Because if you did, it would prove that you were wrong. Who here likes to be told they're wrong? Nobody wants to be told they're wrong. And subconsciously, you say, I can't lose these last 20 pounds. It's too hard for me to lose weight before surgery. I can't. You know what? That's a filter. Okay? So one of the major powerful filters that you guys have is money. There's a money filter. Obesity is a money disease. I say that all the time. It's a poverty. Like, like me, I'm an immigrant. I grew up really poor. And I'm going to tell you, when you're a poor immigrant, dude, like you just... You just have hustle in you. Mm -hmm. You just don't really sleep. You just understand that, man, I've been given this opportunity. Everybody's you know, dying to come to your country. You guys are lucky enough to be born here. Like, what's the big deal? Like, why are y'all taking this for granted? Right? So I have a hustle filter, too. Now, people forgive you when you're a poor and broke immigrant, right? Like, oh, he's got the immigrant story. How sweet. I came over with my dad when I was six. My dad was 36. 36? Anyone 36 or older? 36. Could not speak English. Could not read stop signs. Hence the whole Asian driver jokes. <laughs> right? Check this out, y'all. 16 years, he retired independently wealthy. Wow. From real estate. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. So... I don't really have much patience for people who say, but Dr. Wong, you don't understand. It's just, there's no jobs in this economy. Yeah, right. No, man. You can do it. If my dad can do it, you can do it. Now, some of y'all sitting there saying, well, oh, that's easy for you, Doc. You're a rich surgeon. <laughs> you can afford to eat fancy, healthy foods. Well, people forgive you when you're a poor, young, broke immigrant. But in 2008, Hurricane Ike went through my community, wiped out me, my properties, I was underinsured, I just lost my shirt. So when you're bankrupt as a surgeon, and you're broke as a surgeon, now people talk a shit about you. Yeah. They don't forgive you. Oh, he must have really fucked up. Oh, yeah, I fucked up, that's right. <laughs> Next. <laughs> what, else? what else you got for me? Right? But then it becomes, I'm gonna write one book, I'm gonna write one book, next book, next book, next book. I'm gonna learn a new surgery, new skill, new skill, new skill. Right? I'm going to learn how to communicate. I'm going to learn how to interview for a job. I'm going to just keep going, keep going. I'm going to learn this social media thing, etc., etc. Just keep going, keep going. Right? So, I created this concept called Fat Brain. You guys have a Fat Brain filter. I'm going to change this to Obesity filter or Fat filter. And you guys all have it, don't you? The second you walk into a room, and you, a uh, restaurant, and you say, I can't fit into that booth. What are you looking at that booth through? <laughs> Fat brain filter. Is that true? Yes. Mm -hmm. You walk, you park your car, and then you go, oh my God, I can't walk across that parking lot. I can't, where's a bench? I need to be able to sit down. I can get that far, and then there better be a bench I can sit down. So you're looking through the world through what? A fat Fat filter. Brain. Y'all got it? Do you understand this concept? So you guys all have fat brain filters. Swimsuit, who wants to go to the swimming pool? See, nobody wants to go to the swimming pool. Bathing <laughs> suit shopping? No. Screw that shit. You know? Okay, now check this out. After you have weight loss surgery, after you have weight loss surgery, is your fat brain filter gone? No. 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 Is it still there? Yes. yes. Hell yeah, it's still there. That's what Amen. we call NSVs, right? Non-scale victories, right? So, like you guys, I used to be a size 24, and now I'm a size 12, oh my god. You guys see those posts? Yeah. And they do the before and after side by side, the blue jeans. Here's my favorite one, right? It's like, I'm going on a plane ride to Portland to see Dr. Vaughn, and look, no seatbelt extender! <laughs> and you take a picture, 
right? Of, of the seatbelt, right? And you post it all over Facebook, like, look at how great I am! <laughs> now think about this for a second. I flew here on a plane to Portland. I sat down on a plane, and I buckled up my seatbelt. Why the hell didn't I go, oh my god! <laughs> look at how much extra belt I got! <laughs> Take a picture of my crotch! <laughs> Post it on Facebook! <laughs> Why didn't I do that? Be a I, don't have I don't have a fat brain filter. It's always been that way for me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Ah, that's it. So, that's the next thing you gotta write down. Your fat brain filter is still there. Your fat brain filter is still there after you have weight loss surgery. So then I have, if I have a fat brain, then you have a skinny brain. And everybody says, Dr. Bong, how do I turn my fat brain to a skinny brain? Who wants to know that? Yeah. yeah. Who wants to know how to turn your fat brain to a skinny brain? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's always funny. People always post like, you know, that fat brain wanted me to have a muffin, but I said, hell no, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I had a smoothie. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Victory! Not today, devil! Yeah. <laughs> right? I win! So here's the thing. Here's the truth of the matter, right? So, so there is no one fat brain. There is no fat brain, per se. So number four. Your fat brain is nothing more than many, many filters that you're looking through. Does that make sense? Yeah. Your entire history of what caused you to become morbidly obese, 300 pounds, 400 pounds, it's not one thing, it's not one brain, it's multiple slices of how you look at your life. That's the abuse, mm -hmm. that's the bad relationship, that's the low self-esteem. That is the not good at math. That is the I can't afford it. I was laid off. My mom died of cancer. It's just boom, 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 boom. Right? And the problem is you guys only have a few skinny brain filters. That's it. I'm going to tell you, show of hands real quick, who here wanted to come to this conference but wasn't sure if they really could afford it or really couldn't go and maybe they were kind of right on the fence. Raise your hands if you're kind of right. See, that's almost all of y'all. Guess what that filter was? That's your fat brain filter. It's like, I don't know if I'll get my money's worth. I don't know if I'll get time off. I don't know if the speakers will be any good. You make all sorts of excuses for that, right? Who's here glad that they came and met me? Amen. Amen. All right. So, so, so what you have to do now, you guys want to know? Fat brain? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to take your fat brain you got to remove the filters. You have to remove a fat brain filter, and then you have to replace with a skinny brain filter. Like one little, like, I did go to Portland. I mean, my credit card might bounce next to next week. <laughs> but man, I'm here. Check, one thing for skinny brain, right? So every single day you take one uh, filter out, Oh, that was your fat brain thing? Like, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like green smoothies. That's a fat brain filter. And you take it out, and you replace with this. You know that green smoothie wasn't bad? It was pretty, it was alright. I can get better. That's one for the skinny brain. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or even, even if you said, you take out the green smoothie, and you taste it, and you said, that tastes like shit. <laughs> Dr. Bong's probably a quack. <laughs> but then you say, but I'm going to try it again tomorrow. That's one for the skinny brain. Got it? You don't have to like it, but you're going to try it again. That's a skinny brain. Okay? Um, I, I really screwed up this project that I did, but I'm not giving up. I'm going to do it again tomorrow. That's a skinny brain. That's one for the skinny brain, right? So the idea is now you have to add um, to your skinny brain every single day. You add to your skinny brain, you try something, a new skill, a new technique, something else, a new way of speaking to your kids where you're not yelling and fighting. You watch a YouTube video on how to communicate with your spouse, that's one for the skinny brain. Does that make sense? 
And eventually, you want to lessen how many filters you have in the fat frames. Okay? Now, question. Question. Will you ever get rid of all the filters in your fat frame? No. 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 Too long. Too long. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, you guys remember, um, some of you are too young to remember this, but you remember that little Kodak carousel machine when we were little? Yeah. yeah. And you put the slides in there and you have to look at it. Yeah. The slides. <clears throat> and, uh, you had to get it in exactly the right way. Sometimes, like, the kids wouldn't be paying attention. They put it sideways, and the teacher would project it, and you're all looking at the picture like that. Damn it, Jimmy. Or you put it backwards, and you put it from the beginning to the end. Oh, the teacher gets all mad at you. So how do you do fat brain to skinny brain every single day? When you approached with the situation, you have to ask two questions. You guys want to know the two questions? Yes. Y'all yes. want to know the two questions? Yes! yes. All right. One is... This true. That's the question. Is this true? I can't afford it. Is that true? How does a broke ass skinny immigrant Asian afford it, but I can't? How does my maid, Spanish speaking maid, how can she afford it, but I can't afford it? Is this true? Right? So that's the first question you ask yourself. So now you're doing that carousel, you come up with a little filter that you see that you really believe, and you say, is this true? Okay, and the reason why you're doing this is because of this right here. Now what number am I? Six. Everything you know, underline no. Everything you know, I know, not I believe, I know this for a fact. I know everything you know. Made you fat. I promise you, everything you know made you fat. That's how you got here. How you interpret things, how you talk, how you believe, how you process stress. You think that beef jerky is healthy? You know beef jerky is healthy. <laughs> you know you got to count grams of protein. No, that shit made you fat. You know how to count points for Weight Watchers. You know, no, 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 it made you fat promise you. Okay? So then you got to ask yourself, is this true? This is how you start the process of start questioning. Like, is this really true? Okay? Number two, if it's not true, then the question is, how can I? Not, oh, well, that was easy for Dr. Vong. He's cute and sexy, but for me, it's like hard. <laughs> no, no, no. It's possible for you, too. It's possible. If, it, if it's possible for my dad, who was 36, went into a country, couldn't speak English, couldn't read anything, and retired independently wealthy, and 16 years later, I mean, that's a driver's license. That's it. If he can do it, you can do it. Does that make sense? And you just have to say, how can I? How is it possible for me to? Okay? So what you have to do is just look at every single slide. Every time you start to think and doubt, question yourself too hard. Like, is that really true? How can your Honda fit into a size 4? But I seem to think it's not possible for me. Like, is that true? Maybe it is possible for me. If, it, if I think it's possible for me, then how can I do it? Well, maybe I should ask Yolanda. How would you do it, Yolanda? Does that make sense? So we just keep pushing, okay? So you replace it one by one. Just every single day, a little filter, a little filter. Check it out. Add to a skinny brain filter. Take it away from a fat brain filter. Just every single day. Just whenever you can, right? Okay. You guys want to duck it up again? Duck yeah. yeah. it up! Duck it up! Duck it up! Duck it up! What's the problem with looking at it one by one? It's too fucking slow, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> too slow! <laughs> too slow! Life's too short! I ain't got time for this! No, too slow! So, uh, in my elementary school, when we were doing the carousel, you know, they always pick like the smartest, well-behaved kid, which was me, you know, to do the carousel. So I had all the carousel done one day, and I started to take it to my teacher. I said, teacher, I got the carousel. Whoa! Tripped, and it all fell out. So the teacher's like, doc! So now I got to get down the floor and look, and you got to put it back in, right? So here's what you got to do. If you want to duck it up, this is too slow, you have to do this. Everyone repeat after me. Dump it out! Dump it out! Take your left hand, because I'm left-handed. 
Turn your head over. Everyone do it with me. Dump it out! Dump it out! Dump it out! Dump it out! Because everything you know made you fat. So it's all wrong. You start from that premise. Maybe the, this is not right. I gotta dump it out. Right? You're gonna dump it out! You start fresh. Amen. It's faster. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Now you guys are going to leave here and go, oh, Dr. Bond was awesome. I'm all clear-headed. I'm empty-headed. I just feel great. It's like a douche commercial. I feel great. Fresh and clean. And then your husband is going to say, I'm kind of hungry. Let's go have water burger. Let's go have donuts. What just happened? Another filter just smashed you right back in your empty head. Does that make sense? So someone else, your support person, your mom, your favorite person, your bestie, your best friend, your spouse, your kids. Oh, mom, you've been so good. I'm graduating from school. Let's go celebrate. I want pizza. Another fat brain filter just went back in. Does that make sense? As motivated as you guys are right now when you leave here, I hope you'll be motivated. Just understand that the world that you live in is full of negativity, obesity. Two-thirds of Americans are overweight. Most Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Most people are negative because of the news, social media, all that stuff they read and watch. So that's the environment you're about to leave and go back into. So you're going to be, even though you're going to be clear-headed, they're going to start adding those filters back in. Who do you think you are? Weight loss surgery. You're <coughs> cheating. I had to do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> and then you start doubting, right? You start wondering, was this the right thing for me? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So guess what you have to do? Dump it out again! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone repeat after me. Dump it out again! Dump it out again! <laughs> The promise I make to all my patients is this. I will never tell you to do something I don't do. Is that fair enough? Yes. yes. So my patients know if it's your birthday, have birthday cake. I don't care. You're just not going to lose weight that day. No big deal. But you feel like you're powerless over donuts every morning because some asshole brought it into work and you just have to eat it because you just can't. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to win it. Right? So green smoothies for breakfast is what I do. Salad a day, I try to. I try to be mostly pescatarian. I have meat, but I feel I have guilt about that. I'm really co seriously considering giving up all meat. Um, so <clears throat> it's a, always a process. I tell my patients to dream big dreams, yes? Yes. Big ass yes. goals, why? Because that's what I do. You know, I got a small part in a major movie. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Do you guys remember Final Destination? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, there's a, the creators of Final Destination have a new franchise called Superstition. They're, fil they're starting to film it, and I got a little bit part in the beginning. Love that. Isn't that cool? Yeah! What the fuck does that have to do with being a surgeon? Nothing! <laughs> what does it have to do with living an awesome, beautiful, wonderful life? Everything. Everything. That's right, that's right. In discussion with my own TV show, all that sort of stuff. Because it's possible. It's possible to write 200 books. I promise you it is. I'm going to make it happen, yeah? So, oh, why am I telling you that? Because <laughs> every night, I dump it out. I dump it out. I don't hold on to what I believe. If tomorrow a surgery came out that was like better than the sleeve, I wouldn't be like, no, 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 the sleeve's the best. I would be like, oh, let's look into that. Okay. If tomorrow a pill, <laughs> don't, don't hold on to your surgery date, if tomorrow a pill comes out <laughs> and says, hey, this has equivalent results as weight loss surgery, guess what I would do? <laughs> I would be the number one pill seller <laughs> in the country, yeah. right? Because I dumped it out. Now, here's why I dump it out. Because it opens you up uh, to possibilities. The problem we make is that we stand so firm in what we know is true. This is too hard. Too hard to lose weight. I can't afford it. You are so rigid. Rigid. 
rigidity, if you think about this, everything that's about to die gets stiff. Is that true? Like grass, when it's young, it's green, supple, flown. When it's summer, it's hot, it's roasting, it gets hard, just be like that. Rigidity is going to get you to like moving towards death, right? You have to remain supple and open to like what is possible. That's how you do it. And, and to do that, you've got to dump out all your notions. And listen, if y'all don't agree with me, understand this. They're not even your fucking notions. <laughs> Someone else put the in you. Someone else told you you needed a, a badunka dunk like a, like a Kardashian, and you don't. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. It's someone else's notions. You may even you may hate the Seahawks, and you've just been too scared to tell your dad. <laughs> <laughs> They're not your notions. We have very few independent thoughts ourselves. That's the truth. I promise you. That's the truth. Right? <coughs> Ask these questions. Right? Open yourself up to possibilities. And that, oh, slowly, over time, is how you replace your fat brain with your skinny brain. When you open up to the possibility and to the wisdom and to the knowledge that your eyes are obscured by these filters, that how you see the world and judge the world. And they also reflect on yourself. These filters cause you to judge yourself in unfair, unjust, unrealistic ways. And the only way that you overcome this obesity is to get rid of these filters, to rise above what the world and nature and society is telling you that you should be or should do or should think. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Life is short. Go be awesome. Y'all have a great group. Thank you guys very much. I love y'all very much. Help me support me in cause me billion.org. Um, sleepacademy.com, 99. Oh, you got some books here. I'll autograph these sleeve books. These are good for if you had a bypass band, doesn't matter. Um, these, this is 20. Lab band rescue if you're thinking about lab band revision. I have one eating healthy on a budget. This will feed 20 people. Whoever buys this book, eating healthy for kids also. Our ladies will be up here helping. Thank you guys. Hope you all had a great session. Cool? Yeah.